I worked in a corrupt drug and alcohol rehab for five years. Why do these guys always have to wear this mask? Like, what are they doing that's so incriminating? Like, I understand if you work for the cartel, you gotta wear the mask, but like, why is this guy gotta wear this mask? Corruption is everywhere from patients using with staff members to staff members having affairs. Before I got hired, the guy that Ballad. interviewed me appeared to be under the influence of stimulants. A lot of the patients that came in knew staff members because they were friends or maybe even they used together a long time ago. And unfortunately, a lot of those workers relapsed. Yeah. I don't know how many people I've talked through suicidal. I mean, that's totally logical. Like, who would want to work at a rehab facility? A reformed drug addict that raves about how much it changed their life and how they found God. Now, likelihood that that person is going to go outside and get drugs and then bring them to work and start selling drugs to people at their job is pretty, probably pretty high, I would say. The ideation, they're on their last breath of hope. And to come to a place that prioritized money and business over their life, it was sickening. For sure. We actually had one instance where a 19-year-old boy was rushed through the program for the sake of giving up their bed to somebody else who could take cash or had better insurance. He was sent home and crazy. overdosed two days later. That's died. crazy. Crazy. That's, that's ugly. For real, for real. That's ugly. The facility that I worked at was at minimum a thousand dollars per day and was in network and approved by a lot of major insurance companies in california but working on the inside it felt like just a bunch of people who were newly sober trying to figure out how to run a business there was one instance where we had a staff member who relapsed and quit and they got back into the addiction lifestyle they were dealing drugs they were a connect for somebody who was in the rehab that is wild see that's what i was saying earlier that the likelihood that that thing was probably happening is pretty high but to hear this whatever say that it was um considerably like a bunch of ex-addicts that have put their addict energy into running a business for the first time is honestly so funny that person knew where to drop it off where it would be found and a patient overdosed because of that crazy it was definitely just a big ball of chaos certainly certainly honestly you would want you kind of would want ex-drug addicts to run a rehab but also the exact person that you don't want to run a rehab is ex-drug addict so it's kind of like a paradox inpatient manager was actually notorious for gossiping about what patients disclosed in private that's ugly one session. really ugly there was one time that i was at one of the houses and he was reading somebody's therapy note he pushed the keyboard back and he sat back and he said man if she wasn't patient i'd totally fuck her she definitely <laughs> the ass. that's wild <laughs> that's a wild thing to say uh, period period to say that out loud is uh, you're like a weird person like and to say it about your patient at work is like like 10 times the weird it's like ko ken times 10 but for revertedness he definitely takes it we that. also had a that's crazy who attempted patient brokering Patient brokering is when somebody at a facility is basically doing a backdoor deal for cash and gets a percentage of the cut of whoever they can bring in for treatment. That's it has been known that patient brokering does take place in the rooms of Alcoholics and Narcotics Anonymous. People will go in and basically just start asking people, hey, who's got health insurance? The screening process consisted of a mini biopsychosocial assessment where you collected medical history, abuse history, drug use history. A lot of the people that were answering the phones were not qualified or certified, including myself. These people had no clinical experience, no clinical credentials, and a lot of the time, not even a high school diploma. A lot of the questions what is, are really... What are these people, like, responsible for, though? Like, what do these people actually do? Is it something that anybody can do? 
it doesn't really matter if you're working in a facility that is important to people's lives if you're doing a task that really anybody can do like it's hard to mess the task up triggering especially when we would get to the section about abuse the more sick a person was the better chance their insurance would pay for them to stay longer so you're constantly battling between picking this person apart or letting them have their dignity or not doing your job the insurance department was under a lot of pressure from the CEO to bill for as much time as they could. The for clinical sure. department was trying to, make to their money. people who came there for help. There was one instance where the insurance director started yelling obscenities at the clinical director because they wanted to keep a patient longer than the clinical director wanted to. It always felt like that's crazy that's crazy when you prioritize making money over the customer it is crazy because the customer is a patient not just a customer like it's not like you're selling toys to four-year-olds you're, you're like literally dealing with people's lives it was profit over people definitely it's heartbreaking definitely that's crazy Ugly, super At ugly. one point, two of the managers were having an affair. They would disappear to take lunches together and be gone for hours or be locked in one of the offices. They weren't able to be disturbed. Ultimately, it made the patient suffer. I was in a constant battle with my own moral compass and my desire to help people, hoping that the next day will be different. I was having panic attacks at work. I would lock myself in my office and just cry. It takes an emotional toll on you to be in such a toxic work environment. And then the kind of work that we're doing is so heavy. We had no support. I knew I had to leave. crazy to anybody who's look i still want to know why this motherfucker has to wear this mask there's no reason for him to wear this mask like he doesn't need to be top secret he didn't even give the name of the rehab like it's totally cool bro you can take the mask off i understand that's vice's like aesthetic for this bullshit but like take the fucking mask off and i hope you have a good rest of your day peace out